Hey guys, it's Empty High Moon Dragon. Um, no, it's been a while since the last time we've talked about any books. And yes, I have one of my snakes with me. I actually have Philotus with me right now. Um, I would have had my uh, boa with me, uh, but he's already eaten, so I didn't want to have him with me. So anyway, let's talk about Killing Stalking. They finally ended the series. Now, I don't know how many people have actually been reading the book, so if you don't want any spoilers, because this episode we're going to be talking about today is going to have some spoilers, so if you don't want that, click out of this video. Okay? You've had your warning. Let's talk. So, in Killing Stalking, at the very towards of the end, our one detective who kind of had a suspicion of the murders that were going on from our first victim which was the uh the girl that was killed when bum was kidnapped up until the very last victim he had a suspicion of who was doing it but due to the fact the kid was friends with the commander of Ch uh, the the chief commander of the police force um, he was told to leave the guy alone. You guys know who I'm talking about, the handsome jock. I'm sorry, I'm bad with Japanese names. Um, as I've said in pretty previous videos, I am dyslexic, so certain things I just cannot pronunciate to save my life. So anyway, I, I've just called him the jock. Forgive me. So anyway, we come to find out several things. First of all, we found out that the jock's mother... Um, was actually suffering from a mental illness um when he was a child she actually tried to smother him to death with a pillow and if his father had not come in she would have killed him um down the road we found out that the father eventually was on some form of medication uh and the mother uh, killed him by an overdose or she stressed him out or something. It was a very interesting way that she did it. I'm pretty sure she overdosed him if I remember correctly. And so what wound up happening is she buried the father with her son. Now that's what doesn't start to get creepy. What starts to get creepy, <coughs> excuse me, they were doing like this like holiday it was during like the holidays like christmas and stuff so bum and the jock are just trying to have like their own like little christmas so they have like a tree in there uh bum cooked like a really really nice dinner and bum was trying to be kind of like cute and seductive at the same time which there's nothing wrong with that and I was like oh this is so cute and sweet you know he's trying to be like this little lustful guy well during that something very bizarre happened bum had leaned the jock against the table like they were gonna do it on the table and I was like oh that's something kinky that's really interesting but then it's what the jock said that made me take two steps back. He said, Mom, stop. And I was like, what? And it shocked Bum to hear him say that. Well, apparently, eventually, after the father's death, the mother was starting to see her um, husband in her own son and she tried to do some yeah she she tried it it was very disturbing out of all the things i've seen in this book that's what got me so what does that tell you but anyway um we come to find out that the mother either was murdered by her own son or she died they really don't go into too much detail that i remember but we do see that she was actually buried in the wall of the house they actually knocked down a center of the house because what had ha what had happened is our detective i know i'm going a little out of order here but trust me this will make sense the detective that had 
known which house belonged to the jock. Even though he had no search warrant, he had nothing that gave him the right to go in the house, he went in the house. And Bum was tied up in a chair. And see, as I'm looking at this, in the back of my mind, I'm saying, dude, this is a trap. You just need to get out. Don't worry about the kid. You need to get out. But see, as an officer, in his mind, he's got to save this kid to serve, protect, all that. Well, it was a trap. And it was set by, you guessed it, the jock. So a fight goes on. He's beating up the detective pretty bad. He then took a kettle that had been sitting on the stove and scalded this man. Just poured scalding hot water onto this guy. And it had gotten bad because then he, he got bum involved. And it really turned out to be not only a fight for a life, but also to save a life. Well, what wound up happening is that the house got caught on fire during this fight. And as I'm reading this, I'm like, man, this, this detective is not going to live. And not only that, now we've got a house fire going on. Well, what wound up happening, it's actually kind of sad, really. I thought it was kind of sad. But um, this is where we're getting towards the ending. I, do forgive me. That is my IMBU. Somebody is trying to call me. Um, <laughs> I know I say that all the damn time. I'm sorry. But what wound up happening, the detective and Bum get out. And as the house is burning, the jock is inside the house. And he is screaming off the top of his lungs how much it hurts. I'm like, uh, yeah, you're burning alive. Of course it's going to hurt. And I was just thinking in the back of my mind how this all played out. How, how we got from, you know, the very beginning all the way from the middle towards the end. But that's not where it ends. You would think that's where it ends. No. After they find the mother, um, as I said, in the wall because of the fire, uh, they did manage to get the jock out, but he was so severely burnt. He even had pieces of his uh, skin missing by his jaw. He was so badly burnt that Bum didn't recognize him and kept telling the officers and the firefighters to go back in there. There was somebody else in there. And of course, obviously that's how they found the mother. But what made this even more tragic, and it's not so much tragic for, um, it was more tragic for, for Bum, really. Because as he's in the hospital, he's recovering, and he's got a friend there. And she's trying to comfort him. Well, then the victim, well, the mother of the one girl with the heart tattoo uh, that was killed, she comes in there and eventually she starts asking all these questions and Bum's just getting upset about it because at one point, you know, he wants to say something, but at the same time, he can't really say anything because, you know, he was all messed up in the head. So what wound up happening is his friend um, actually stepped in and asked the woman to leave that he needs his rest. He needs to recover. And she did. Well, then eventually when Bum, start, Bum found out that the jock did make it and that he was being kept at a different hospital in a room by himself. And so Bum was trying to find him, and everyone was telling him, you need to stay away from him, okay? Because if you get involved with a murderer, they might start charging you. Because that was the other key thing. They were not going to charge Bum for all of this, because they considered him a victim. But if he starts going off, which obviously he did, he went to... First, he went to the wrong hospital. Then he had to go and go to another hospital. He asked the nurse or the, the 
the nurse at the desk three times for where he was. And he said his name three times and they sent him on a wild goose chase. He went to three wrong rooms before he was led to the right room, which I found interesting. It was either A, he wasn't listening to what they were saying, or B, he was getting all his um, words or what he was taking in all mixed up. But they basically what wound up happening is the jock does die. He passes away and they cremated him. And I was like, oh my God, that is so sad. So now Bum is now literally alone in this world. He was with the one person who, yeah, tormented him, but at the same time, eventually they became more than just that. And I was like, that's kind of sad. But here's where it gets even more sad. Apparently, the room that the jock was in, he was not alone. And if he wasn't alone, he definitely was not supervised or nobody cared. Um, he was screaming his head off for Bum. He wanted him by his side. He was screaming his head off. And this old woman couldn't, quote, take it anymore. She killed him. She took a pillow and she smothered him to death. And that's how he died. So on top of being burnt not having the person he wanted by his side, that's how he died. But this is where it gets weird. So they give Bum the ashes of his friend, this so-called murderer. They give him the ashes and he goes back to the house the halfly burnt house that they shared together. And, oh no, yes, yes, he went back to the house. He opens the urn. And I kid you not what he starts doing. He starts remembering things that him and the guy did. He gets aroused and he starts rolling around in the ashes. And as I'm reading this, as I'm seeing this, I'm thinking he has gone now so far off the deep end, there is no way he's gonna be able to live a normal life at this point. And he starts hallucinating where he sees the jock totally fine, not burnt, just like how he remembered him walking off with a woman and Bum is chasing him. He's got his arm out like this, trying to catch him and he can't. And that's how it ends. And I thought, that's a very interesting ending, not just the fact of him being inappropriate with the ashes, but you have to remember, if you've read this book from start to finish, he did suffer quite a bit, but he was with one person who could change just like that. But at the same time, when he was kind to Bum, he loved it. He enjoyed it. Yes, he was still scared at times, but he still liked it. So I found that very interesting. If, if you guys have not read Stalking Killing, you really do need to read it. Even though I said at the beginning of the video that this was all about spoilers. Um, just to see how it starts is scary enough as it is. I was going to talk about BJ Alex, but I decided not to because... Surprise, surprise, Avenge 900 is actually one of my followers, and I don't want to spoil anything, but I've been reading it, and things are getting pretty interesting. Um, I'm reading another book. It's called Obey Me. It kind of reminds me of Stalking Killing, but it also kind of reminds me of Warehouse, and as they get more chapters, they've only got like 13 out right now, and they're only like 10 pages long, so they're not real long. But um, as that progresses, and if it gets real good and interesting, I'll make a video about that one as well. 
but I've seen the runtime on this one. And so I'm going to call it quits. So this is M. Jahaya Moon Dragon. And as always, I will see you in the next anime. Bye-bye.